Let's go straight to it. For all of you at home, pull up your YouTube or your Twitter browser and put in DJ Reacts to the 27-17 loss at Pitt. This is uh, one of college football's biggest stars. We heard Red seeing all about him all offseason, and rightfully so. He did a great job in some cameos last year for Trevor. On the road against Notre Dame, gets a big win. 400 yards in his first home start when Trevor caught COVID. Then all the buildup was for him. And then the NIL hits, and he is the poster boy, him and his guy in Norman, Oklahoma. Ironically, both these guys are struggling, and both of them got benched. Go to the interview. I'm just going to read out three quotes, and I'm just going to throw it right to you. I'm, Clint, I'm going to start with you, Hacking Hack and Bryce. The reporter, one reporter asked him, I'm being four and three right now. My man said, it is what it is. We can't do anything about it. The question about being a starter, Dabo Sweeney commented after the game, and he said, hey, every job's open. The guys that perform and this, that, and the other, we'll see. But every single job's open. A reporter said, what happens if you're not the starter? DJ, I'm happy to support my brother. If he does get in and play, I'll be excited for him. Nobody's earned it more. Last question. In regards to the shuffle pass interception, he had a, he had a play in the game midfield yeah. where he was really kind of sloppy and he kind of half threw it, a, a shuffle pass the line of scrimmage. Well, the, the D tackle caught it, took it straight back 50 yards for a touchdown. He said, my hat's off to him. That was a great play. I already know how I feel, and I'll hold mine to the back end. Clint, I'm going to start with you. That is the leader of your powerhouse, power five, national championship caliber program. That's the leader. That's not a guy in the locker room, let alone that would be a situation too. But that's the tip of the spear. When you hear those comments, and we've talked about how Clemson's played this year, where are you right now if you're Dabo Sweeney? Home with a cold one, doing like this, looking over your program. Where are you right now? Well, I'm going to answer that two part. Number one, he ain't the leader. Number two, he ain't the tip of the spear. If that, if those are his words, which I saw the video, he ain't neither. But I mean, he is by that. position. Hold on, I agree with you. He's not acting like it. But the quarterback, just by position, you are oh. that. Oh, I agree. I agree with your point, and I agree right. with the expectations that have been placed upon the young man. Right. But, but unfortunately, if those are his answers to those specific questions, he ain't cut out to be the quarterback at Clemson. He ain't cut out to be the leader of a bunch of grown ass men in a locker room. He's not cut out to be the tip of a spear of a program that some say once again six months ago is above Alabama in terms of ranked programs in the country I mean and so to, to me I there's there's so many if ands or buts that we can talk about the, he ain't the leader he ain't the tip of the spear and if you want to know what's wrong with Clemson the most disappointing program in America today watch put that damn YouTube right there on repeat and I'm not blaming it on the kid because it is what it is you can only be who you genuinely and sincerely are but ultimately, that is a problem if that is your leadership, if that's the response. There's a handful of things, and nobody knows this more than, than the guys on, that I'm staring at right here on this pod. There's a handful of things that you have to have if you're going to be a bad son of a bitch at the college level at the quarterback position. One of them is an unhealthy co competitive gene. You have to hate to lose, and that includes losing your spot as the number one quarterback yeah. uh, with, the, with one of the greatest programs over the last 15 years in college football. You have to hate it. You have to hate the guy that took it. You have to absolutely be chomping at the bit to get back on the practice field and be willing to tell anybody in America you'll do anything to go get that job back. And if you don't have that competitive gene, then your ass ain't cut out to be quarterback at a high level. Your talent may take you there. But you'll never, you'll never play above your ceiling. The guys around you will never play above their ceiling, which ultimately the great quarterbacks do. And, and that's just, to me, that's, that's what I personally think about the words that I heard from that quarterback. If, if, you're, if you're the head coach, Dabo Sweeney, you got to look in the mirror, man. You got to look in the mirror. Hmm. You're responsible to develop, to develop that young man.
And if you've developed a young man that don't care that the backup is starting, come on, man. You, 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 either recruited, you either recruited the wrong personality or haven't developed him to be the most competitive dude in the room. And I don't know how you win ball games with that. Hack, to that point, exactly. Clint yeah. just put it on Dabo's table. You play for Bill O'Brien and Todd Bowles. How would they handle the kids' breakdown of the day and the circumstances? Yeah, I mean, it's tough because had he been handling business the way that he's probably capable of and Clemson's capable of, probably two of the three questions you had wouldn't have been asked, right? Good, um, point. good, point. good point. He's a good kid. Uh, and that's how he answered it. But to Clint's point, I don't need a good kid. When I'm in, when my back's against the wall and I'm in the situation that Clemson's in, I don't need a good kid. I need someone who's a killer. I need someone who's going to lead, who's going to lead men and who has a competitive edge and a attitude about attacking the situation in a completely different manner than DJ is. Uh, and again, that may be who he is and that may be how he's doing it. But then again, he may not be the guy for the job. And that's, that's the hard part about it. And that's, that's just, that's just what it is. But where Clemson's at right now and the state of the program and the way he's answering things, I'm putting, I'm putting the guy that is the meanest son of a gun in that lock, in that, in that quarterback room on the field and just letting him go lead the guys, play, play scrappy, win ugly, I don't care. But the guy who's going to be willing to lay everything on the line, and I haven't seen that from DJ this year in terms of lay everything on the line, leave his guts on the field, that's all he's got. I haven't seen DJ do that this year, and I think that's a product of what led to today, him getting put on the bench, and then the way he answered it. I just don't know if he has that in him. And I hope he, ter- I hope he proves me wrong. I'm always a guy that hopes these kids have a ton of success and go do it, but I, he's going to have to do that to me. He's going to have to prove me wrong at that point right. in time. Bryce Petty, uh, your doorbell rings. It's DJ. He's got a six pack. He says, Hey Bryce, you got a minute. What was so big about how I handled that today? What was so big <laughs> about that? I'm not the only five star on this squad. I don't yeah. call the plays. What would you try to break down to him? Like, like you just said, like Hack just said, he is a great dude, great dude. But the great dude deal is cool if it's lined up next to a killer, all in the same chest. How would what, like, Walk us through how you would handle a youngster to, to shoes you've had on before. Yeah, well, what I, I think particularly interesting about this conversation uh, and, and George, you know, cause you've worked with me before, um, um, as I, I'm, I'm probably, I leaned way more to his side of being too nice and look where I'm at. I'm talking about football, right? So being in a situation to, to have a six pack. Well, wait, with time DJ out for a second. Couch, let me, let ahead. me just pause you for a second. And, and just full transparency, I've known Bryce since he's a junior in high school. And I met him at the Nebraska football camp. And we have worked through his whole career, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you played with broken ribs. You jumped in the middle of fights in your locker room. You've gone on the road, been cussed at, same with your teammates. Yeah. And then from Baylor, wearing Baylor colors in the Big Ten, you had back-to-back conference championships. I like, yes, you, you're a nice guy, but you have to be a killer to do all those things. Baylor yeah. hadn't won the, the conference championship since you left. Yeah. That's just not a thing you do at Baylor. That's what you guys did at Baylor. So I just wanted just to set this correctly. There are some similars between you and DJ. Yours are, are settled and in stone. His have yet to be determined. But what we're seeing right now isn't close to what we what we know of yours. I'm just going to set that. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, I appreciate it. So, so the, the idea, the idea going or leading it that way was to, was to say that that between those white lines, no one gives two shits if you're nice. Dabo right. does not give two shits if you're nice. The head coach on that side, 
the QB that's, that's got you circle going, you got a million dollars from Dr. Pepper. Why? I'm going to go out there and kick your ass. Those, those, that type of mentality works great back in the dorm when you're grabbing wings with the boys, whatever. Between those white lines, and, and, you know, Clint pointed out, I think we all know it too, all of us playing ball, the only thing that, that matters in the world of football between those white lines is can you win? Can you elevate the group and the, and the team around you uh, to get a win? And when you start a, a game, any game, doesn't matter, junior high, high school, college, it is all about the win. So, so as a teammate, if I see an interview where you perceptionally, right, as a perception, do not care. One, that you didn't get the win. Two, that you're not even out there. And then three, you don't own up to your part of uh, a pick and what, what inevitably was a pick six that was a big part of that game. Man, we're going to have to need – we're probably going to need a 30-pack because we're going to need to sit and talk about do, do, you, do you love this so much do you do you want to be here if you don't want to be here and you just want to be a nice guy man there's plenty of nice guys in the world that's fine but look man life ain't nice just because you're nice you know there's there's going to be some shit to happen and you're going to have to i need to know whether or not you're a teammate whether or not a spouse uh of of, a father you know i need to know that you're going to fight you can still be nice but there's going to be a day where you know hey if if you know, old, old Timmy takes my daughter's lunch money. I'm going to be banging on Timmy's door and saying, hey, get Timmy out here because he owes my daughter some lunch money. You got to know that you have that in you. So this is a this is a, a awkward timeout, but we got to call this timeout. We're going to move from oh, we're going to move from performing and and having balls when you're out there to keeping them clean and manscaped. We're just gonna just jump to it. Dig in the <laughs> That's a great jump. You. That's a great jump. There you go. So, ISO, ISO, play one. Play one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Clint Hack and, and and Bryce, be ready because you know I'm I'm dishing on this. Support for today's episode of After Dark College Football Field of Twelve. Comes from Manscaped, the world leader in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped has just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.10 Hackenberg. It's a sleek, well-designed, and precision-engineered trimmer. And I got to tell you, I was blown away by the performance. The way Manscaped engineered the ultimate growing and body trimmer is simple. They focused on intelligent functionality and providing the comfortable grooming experience. The Lawnmower 4.0. Hackenberg was developed with the trademark skin safe technology, which includes a cutting edge ceramic blade that reduces snags and nicks. Right, Bryce. You need to be confident in any tool you use on the old family jewels. Manscaped, as held up there by Clint, (laughs) features the lawnmower 4.0, also has a 4000K LED spotlight. So Mm. you what the hell you're doing yep. an attachment that allows you to change the length of your trim and a wireless charger most importantly you want to make sure you're not using the same trimmer on your nuts as your face that's just nasty can't do that so ahead so head on over to manscape.com or you'll get 20 percent off free shipping with the codes i'm gonna give you those codes right now field of 12 after dark Put in 20 dark, all caps, for your 20% off and free shipping. So, Manscaped, handle your business uh, as a future user of lands of, of Lawnmower 4.10. Trust me, I will come back and tell you that my balls feel great. Thank you. <laughs>